Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can actually make magnetic bubbles using paramagnetic oxygen. Okay, here we go. So you've probably seen videos before where if you pour liquid oxygen in between two magnets, right where there's a very strong magnetic field, the oxygen will be attracted to the magnets and won't fall through them. However, this is kind of hard to perform. It requires that you have two fairly strong magnets that are separated by a tiny gap and you have to flow oxygen through liquid nitrogen in order to condense it to get liquid oxygen and then you can pour it in between them. But what I want to do is show you an experiment that shows you the paramagnetism of oxygen without having to use liquid oxygen. Before I show you this, let's review what paramagnetism even means. So remember there's different types of magnetism. There's ferromagnetism, which you're probably most familiar with. That's the case where iron sticks to a magnet because iron is strongly ferromagnetic. Now another form of magnetism is called diamagnetism, and this is actually one of my favorites. It's the phenomenon in which something repels a magnetic field. So whatever that magnetic field does, it repels it. So I just have my water cup floating in water so it doesn't have any friction, and I'm, and I'm gonna show you how when I bring my strong magnet near it, it will repel it. See how it's pushing it away? You can do the same thing with wood. There's actually scientists that have levitated frogs using diamagnetism. So notice I'm not touching him at all. <laughs> See? And then a few materials like aluminum are paramagnetic. And paramagnetic means it's attracted to magnets. So now if I just bring my magnet near the aluminum, the aluminum will go towards it. So this is paramagnetism and it's really weak. Now another thing that's paramagnetic is oxygen. Oxygen has unpaired electrons and so it portrays paramagnetism. Now this is best shown with liquid oxygen because it's more dense and you can actually see it better being attracted to the poles of a magnet. But it's a little bit difficult to do so I want to try to do it today without the use of liquid oxygen. Let's just use gaseous oxygen around us. Now in order to do this all you need is some oxygen. I have here a full cylinder of pure oxygen, but you don't actually need to buy something like this in order to do this experiment. You can buy things online. I found that they sell these things 95% oxygen that you can use when you go hiking apparently. You can blow it in your nose and mouth and it gives you a shot of oxygen. So you could buy something like that to do this experiment as well. So all you do is get a bag then fill it with oxygen, seal it off. So I have here a sandwich bag full of pure oxygen. So now let's see if this is attracted to the magnet. So now what I have here is just a pan with water in it. And I'm just doing this so that I have a low friction surface. And then I'm just gonna set some styrofoam on here. You don't necessarily need this, but it just lifts it up above the water so that you're not setting the bag right on the water. Okay, so we have our bag floating on top of the water here. Now let's put our magnet by it and see if it's attracted to it. Okay, let's pull it this way. There it goes. It's definitely attracted to the magnet.
Another way to do this is just to blow bubbles of the oxygen into the water and then attract the bubbles with the magnet. For example, there's a group of oxygen bubbles. Let's see if we can attract these. Now you don't have to have a giant neodymium magnet to do this. You can use a smaller one as well. Okay, now I'm going to be attempting to make actual magnetic bubbles by using this long-lasting bubble solution and blowing it with this gaseous oxygen here. So they're gonna be gas bubbles of oxygen and then I'm going to see if they are actually attracted to my giant neodymium magnet. Whoa, that worked better than I thought. Okay, let's see if it's attracted to the magnet now. Oh, look at him go to it. Okay, look at it go right to the magnet. <laughs> Okay, look how they just zoomed right to the magnet there. It's pretty cool. Magnetic bubbles. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, here we go. Okay, watch. So I'm not, it should just move towards it. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Okay, there you go. Magnetic bubbles. Okay, so doing this experiment got me thinking. If I'm able to push air around in a plastic bag on water using just a magnet, does that mean that there's slightly a higher concentration of oxygen around this magnet than there is elsewhere in the room? Because the air in the room is composed of mostly nitrogen with 21% oxygen. So does that mean right around the magnet though, the oxygen that's in the room is slightly more attracted so there's a little bit higher concentration of oxygen around the magnet? Well, the answer is yes and no. It depends on the temperature and it depends on how strong your magnet is. If your temperature is too high, then that means that the thermal energy of the gas is going to overcome the pull of the magnet and so it's not going to build up oxygen around the magnet. But if you get a strong enough magnet, it is actually possible to get a higher concentration of oxygen around the magnet than elsewhere in the room. In fact, in 2007, there was a paper published on a novel method to enrich oxygen and air using magnets. So what they did is they flowed gas in between two magnets where there was a very strong magnetic flux and the oxygen was deflected towards the magnets and the nitrogen just went straight through and they showed that at room temperature, they were able to concentrate the oxygen to around 0.49% higher than regular air. So it's not much, but they did get a higher concentration of oxygen using the magnets. But if they increased the gas temperature by 40 degrees, it went to, from 0.49% down to 0.16%. So that shows that increasing the temperature decreases the amount of oxygen concentration you get around the magnet. So if you're feeling like you need a little bit more oxygen and don't have any around you, just grab a giant magnet and put it right next to your face and enjoy around 0.49% increase in oxygen. Mmm, great. And I'd like to thank someone named Brandon Fisher who contacted me and gave me the idea to do this video. So thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video's out. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. 
and check out the link in my description to see the Action Lab experiment book. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.